Trevor, are you ready? Okay, Good go. to go. All right. Oh, this microphone, guys. Okay. <laughs> Everything's great. Three, two, one, go. So that last episode, I was listening in, trying to catch up. Only caught the first few minutes on my drive to work and was thinking to myself, Jared's really leaning in heavy to this Pokemon stuff today. <laughs> and it was only until you actually said about changing the show, I realized it was a prank. I just thought, because I know you guys like Pokemon, I just thought you were in a Pokemon kind of mood for that day for whatever reason. Got to catch them all, man. <laughs> it, yeah, it's so funny. So so Jared messages me on, on Slack off, you know, just a, a DM. He slid into my DMs, as they say. And uh, <laughs> he, he goes, hey, I've got a great idea for uh, April Fool's I joke. I said I've on got Meg. a stupid idea. Is what I oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> he says, we're just going to lean into this Pokemon thing, and we're not going to let Meg know anything. <laughs> I was like, we'll stop the bit as soon as she says, what is happening? That's the key word. As soon as she says, what is happening? That's when we'll but drop it. But it was so it. And- smooth. It was so smooth. I just thought it was casual pokemon conversation well good what wasn't smooth was we me trying to put on my ash hat my ash ketchum hat that could quickly <laughs> easily be misunderstood if i say it wrong I trying to put on my ash hat but like i couldn't get it on over my headphones so here i am live on the stream like oh no my hat oh, it's key to the bit <laughs> anyway uh, i i had a hard time wrestling my three-year-old for the charmander plush she didn't want me to have it on the podcast <laughs> It's like, this is an important prank that two or three people are going to laugh at. Listen, I need this. Well, on the audio only version, it was flawless. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Audio only. Perfect. Well, glad to have you with us, Trev, uh, here uh, on, on our perfectly good Saturday afternoon. Because, hey, we got to play around with time zones. Freddie just rolled out of bed over there in California. <laughs> Um, Trevor's already on the glass of wine because it's, you know, getting to be the evening. Uh, I mean, it's just, been a long just, week. This, and, and if you're listening to this, it might be a Thursday night. We're going to be watching this live in the premiere this Thursday. I fully anticipate to be uh, right there with you in the chat. So what's up, everybody here with us in the chat? Hopefully there are people here in the chat. <laughs> it's a, a little bit of a different, a little bit of a different show, but uh, I'm excited. We, we've really been hyping this episode for what? A couple months now, right, Freddie? Yeah, yeah. We've been wanting to cover a lot of these lost legends which you know to be honest I didn't know too much about until we started talking about it and there is quite a bit of info there yeah a lot of uh, a lot of corpses on the (laughs) sides of the highway in legends and some of them come back to life I mean just like Palpatine yeah if you want to find out some more about some of these lost stories that have fallen by the wayside in the expanded universe this is the place to be we have got quite the show ready for you. So without further ado, let's kick it off. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Legends Look Back, a show brought to you by Uchini.com, a Star Wars books podcast for people who have the Ewok TV show theme song playing on repeat where we talk about all things legends, celebrating our rich EU history, as well as diving into lesser-known Star Wars classics, or perhaps Star Wars classics that uh, don't quite exist, but almost did. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm your host, Jared Mays, and today, looking like Lando Calrissian himself, is my friend, Freddie C. What's up, Freddie? Why, hello there. Doing fantastic. Uh, I just rolled out of bed. Uh, Half, you know, this is my shirt for the day and still wearing my pajama bottoms so <laughs> the the classic zoom combo exactly <laughs> but i'm excited it's a good thanks episode. for waking up early for us man appreciate yeah. it yeah anything and for trevor also ready to do her ventress impression with us this week kind of maybe probably not is our producer meg dowell not this week i'm not ready <laughs> hello it might happen. Somebody paid real money for it, probably. Yeah, I, you know, I will do it. I, I made a promise on camera. It will happen. Just not, not yet. Just, just I got to admit, I was watching some of the Tartakovsky Clone Wars and, uh, oh my gosh, that's going to be a tough impression to do. I don't think I would try it in a million years if it was me personally. So glad that he asked you to do it instead I, of me. You know, when someone challenges me to do something, I have a very hard time saying no 
and I have a very hard time accepting that I might fail. So y- you'll get it. it. Don't worry. Does it count if you don't shave your head? You know what? <laughs> the, you're, you're not the first person who's brought that up, and I just I have nothing to say about it right now. Uh, I mean, I don't know that it would work as a look for anything other than the bit, but it would be worth it for the bit. People would be like, Meg, why'd you shave your head? And you know, you'd be like, well, I've got a podcast. You know, I love this show and I love all of you, but maybe not that much. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I would do it either. That's fine. That's fine. Well, you have heard him now. He started the show off for us. We always love having him here on Legends Look Back. Now he has his own podcast, which is absolutely one of my favorites in the Uteniverse. Joining us this week from across the pond is our buddy Trevor Davey. Good afternoon, morning, evening, all simultaneously right now. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Glad to have you here with us. Trev, I'm glad to have you here with us on the show this week. I've got to say, man, Star Wars Archives, I was telling you what, in Slack yesterday, I love it like a stepchild. It's like <laughs> I love that. I I instantly turned around to my wife oh, and said, Look at what Jared's just said. That gave me a warm cozy feeling in my heart it's it's like <laughs> that in cafes you know as soon as they hit my feed i listen to them immediately uh sometimes i'll be in the middle of another podcast and i'm like chuck the phone <laughs> i want to listen to these <laughs> my uh, my stepchildren podcasts um what do you have coming up on the pipe with star wars archives uh, well we're doing uh jackson jackson was space rabbit episode yes. we're gonna try and fill a whole oh. hour and I, oh I, yeah, I yeah! Be... I just wrote the Jackson collection. Um, hopefully, that'll be coming out soon. That on, will be up by the site. time you're listening to this or watching this. No way! <laughs> awesome! It's like the perfect Easter topic, right? The it space sure money, exactly. And uh, I don't want to spoil what we're going to talk about, so I'm not going to give your listeners the hints. They're going to have to come right. and subscribe to our Patreon yeah, and listen to our gotta podcast. Have the, gotta throw us those credits. Uh, and then we're going to do an episode on just retcons, which Andrew on the team suggested to us. So oh, just man. All my brain is already hurting. Mannerisms of retcons that have appeared in the 40 years of Star Wars publishing. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So excited. And uh, speaking of Star Wars publishing, have we got the Legends news this week? I mean, we just had the, this is recording this on a Saturday. It was the Friday. Uh, I was settling in to binge watch the Tartakovsky Clone Wars. Maybe had some Ewoks on the docket as this new stuff has hit the, the what are we calling this? The vintage collection on Disney Plus. And then I threw all of the rest of my day's plans out the window and spent a good two or three hours screaming about, I would call it the biggest day for us as Legends fans since the fateful day when Legends became Legends, right? When the EU was yeeted into um, <laughs> you know, into the Legends universe. Don't, do you think, Freddie, that this was the biggest day for us as Legends fans since that fateful day in April of 2014? Yeah, I, I didn't find out about this until I, I started looking at the show notes and I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? What did I miss? Uh, yeah, what did I miss? And then I, I went to go research it and I, I just can't believe it. I the fact that legend still is permeating Star Wars, I, they they clearly know that we exist, right? I mean, it, it must be our show. <laughs> That's what it is, absolutely. Oh my gosh! Well, good luck trying to get through all of the um, the Discord conversations about this. Uh, had, it, hundreds and hundreds of messages as we exchanged across multiple channels for hours and hours and hours sharing in excitement over this uh tell the good people what's coming up freddie start us off yeah so we've got some new covers as jared explained for for some of our legends books and they've got a nice banner at the top that i believe says uh the essential legends collection which is a banner that i don't mind having on my books so we've got uh, some nice art from Heir to the Empire. Uh, it, it just, it screams such, you've got, you've got Thrawn just evilly looking to his side. And of course, the uh, original cover with the uh, lightsaber in the air. Can't wait to see that. Yeah, you know, the history of Heir to the Empire covers is interesting, isn't it? Oh, yeah, there's so many different types. You've got the shirtless Sabayoth, <laughs> you know, the classic <laughs> Tom Young covers. Uh, then in 2016, right, we had the, the new uh, Heir to the Empire, but with way more Thrawn covers, right? 275% more Thrawn <laughs> across yeah. the three covers, which I might go ahead and like have to buy because Jacob on the team asked me, how many versions of this book do you own? And I was like, all right, let's do the math. Pulled out the spreadsheets, uh, grabbed the, grab the books off the shelves. I own it in the original, you know, uh, 
hardback. I've got the the paperback, the, the Tom Young art. I've got the ebook because I remember purchasing it uh, when I was away on vacation mm -hmm. uh, ten years ago or so, and I needed to read it on ebook right then, right there. I got the audio, like the Audible version, and this would put me to six. How have I miscounted? You got the comics, the hardback, the oh my gosh, five or six versions of the book. It's a lot. It's a lot. Hold on. You have a favorite Garrett. cover, Hold Trevor? Hold on. I, I think I might have to give you something to bring your number up. Okay. Have you seen the Brazilian covers? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're excellent. I've got them as screensavers <laughs> across like my They're my stuff. favorite cover. What, you I don't have a Brazilian considered... covered Ed Vampire in your collection? I haven't considered trying to get <laughs> oh. them. But now I'm thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> if we got any listeners in Brazil, hey, what's up? I'm Jerry. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> so um want to want to say these are really cool great renditions i like the air of the empire cover uh talk about the next one here bane. uh i just called you bane sorry <laughs> talk about the next one here trevor <laughs> uh so the next book was been a nice given series darth bane path of destruction and oh my god the cover on this one it's incredible yeah. i want this good. hanging on my wall as a canvas that's a beautiful cover I Man, think that's that, that one thing of will give you the nicest though. covers ever. Yeah, if you like Sith Lords who will stare into your soul, <laughs> I, I don't think I could put this on my wall, man. <laughs> oh, I, I, I think it's beautiful. I, that's that's a work of art. It is great. It is excellent. Um, it, it's actually interesting to consider the long history of Bane's depiction across different Star Wars media, of course, revealed in the Jedi versus it, Sith comic. It's been the, different. <laughs> the early 2000s we was quite quite cartoony i've got the new essential characters companion from like the early to mid 2000s which he's got that big spiky purple helmet you know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah yeah there's the depiction off the cover of the you know the original path of destruction cover and then you've got the infamous rule of two cover which of course looks like it was made on a ps1 right <laughs> The, the story there, of oh, course, yeah. is that the original artist, uh, it was rushed into production, so he didn't get time to finish the cover. The foreign editions, some of the foreign editions, Skuma Joe is uh, talking about this in our Discord channel. Yeah, I think it's the Japanese one. Okay, yeah, the Japanese edition has um, consistent art across, you know, with the other two books in the trilogy. I got to say, though, this is really just phenomenal, phenomenal. And thirdly, um, in this first wave of books, and they have said, hey, there's more to come. They kind of hinted at maybe we'd be getting an X-Wing one coming up soon, which is exciting. Oh. Uh, just in time for us to do another X-Wing episode, or, or should we call it x -isode? Oh, no. Edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's put that in the ejector seat and just shoot it out of the cockpit. Um <laughs> The deal is this this third one, Shatterpoint, is great. Kind of an interesting third choice, but maybe I should give it a reread. I didn't love it my first time around. Um, of course, Stover is is absolutely critically acclaimed as one of the best Legends authors out there. So I'm excited to pick this up. And maybe most excited, uh, the thing I'm most excited for, Meg, you want to tell him about the other thing that was announced? Uh, yes, I do. It's also a Shatterpoint thing. Uh, yes. <laughs> um. We're also getting, for the first time ever, an unabridged audiobook version of Shatterpoint because there isn't one, or there hasn't been until now. There's, it's debatable. All right, I saw some, saw some banter on Reddit that there is, but it's only for the deaf, right? And it's so it's it's mm -hmm. not accessible to the public. <laughs> it's crazy. I, I only found out about these recently. These unabridged yeah. audio library editions for the hard of hearing. <laughs> Yeah, we were at Eugenie like, all right, we got to get on the dark web to find these things. <laughs> we have not as no. of yet, but, you know, we're tempted. I had no I'm excited for this. I, I'm excited for this one in particular. It, the, the narrator for the Shatterpoint audiobook is, well, I have it somewhere here, Sul Sullivan Jones. Sullivan Jones mm -hmm. is going to be narrating this coming out June 15th. And across the board, the artists on these, we're going to give the artists a shout out. The Air of the Empire cover is from Tracy Ching. The Bane cover is from Simon Goynard. Simon, sorry, I didn't do a great job with your name there, but it's great. I love your art. And uh, Shatterpoint is by Jeff Manning. Uh, guys, which one of these is your favorite? I Bane really... 
Yeah. Bane. I've, okay, Freddy. That that Bane is really nice, but there there's something about the artwork on the on the Thrawn cover that just screams at me. So I'm gonna have to go with the uh, Heir of the Empire, Tracy Ching. It is cool. It is cool. You have a favorite, Meg? Uh, it that has to be Thrawn for me. I just when I, as soon as I saw that, I was like, I I need it on my yeah, shelf. It's great. Yeah, I feel like now I'm going to have to start an entire Thrawn bookcase. I've got my Thrawn poster from one of the Barnes & Noble exclusives. I've got a handful, uh, actually several hands full of different Thrawn hardcovers and collectible editions. I've got the little Chimera pin that Corey sent us for Christmas, or for life's sake, excuse me. Um, We've got like uh, the (laughs) Thrawn Funko Pop. I might just have to go out and find that. We've got a Black Series. I'm going to have a whole Thrawn bookcase so that he can come into my half and say, perhaps you have a problem (laughs) (laughs) but let's be honest we all do we all do i'm really excited about this a lot of fun legends news so much so that we could just spend the rest of the episode talking about the rest of the legends news quickly though before we get into the the heart of the show the meat of the show is uh, we do have some more news for a rise of the sith omnibus coming out in two different covers we've got um covers from well, I, I've had somewhere around here the names of the artists who have done these covers. I'll find it. Uh, excited. It's actually, interestingly enough, kind of the same format they use for the Knights of the Old Republic collection. Now, Trevor, you were saying that these are basically just hardcover on the buy of the Legends Epic collections? Yeah, so it collects the first two uh, Rise of a Sith era Epic collections. But one thing I've just noticed when you put that photo up, I hadn't looked at the artwork before. I yeah, this could is be the wrong art on this, from the Wrath it... of Darth Maul, right? Yes. So that's the art from a young adult scholastic book. Yeah, yeah. Being used on a Marvel omnibus. I actually Just, own I, two I art covers that blew of my that mind. on accident. <laughs> so now I'm going to have a third one. No. So the the artist on the Maul cover is Fleming. It's the the Fleming cover, and then the other one is the box cover, which is actually just the the same. Artwork from what Knights of the, you know, what is it called? The Orient Express, the 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 but, oh, Qui-Gon our, and Obi-Wan. Our Orient Express is yeah. a weird name. Yeah. It's it's a Qui-Gon Obi-Wan Dark Horse comic series. It's so it, it's interesting actually because the comics that are collected in this are for the most part, we could just call this the Qui-Gon uh, omnibus. <laughs> I mean, almost all of these are Qui-Gon-centric stories, which has got me excited. My got my Qui-Gon Funko Pop over there on the shelf looking like he's ready for action and needs me to buy both of these. Well, I'll get one. <laughs> all right, I've already pre-ordered. I think I pre-ordered the Fleming one. That mall art is excellent. Uh, do you guys have – do you think we'll be picking this up? I think so. Yeah, I think so. It, it, it definitely has room in my collection, if that's what you mean. <laughs> Trevor, you get any more shelf space? <laughs> I'm working on it. I just find it incredible. Uh, the, um, the Marvel Legends Epic Collection is only a few years old, and already yeah. it's popular enough that it's getting this deluxe omnibus edition. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest, none of us are going to complain about extra editions of anything. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we're collectors here. Hey, you don't have to read them this way. All these issues are available on Marvel Unlimited or on Comixology. But this is really fun to have the nice hardback collectible version, especially having the two different covers. Kind of fun to pick which one. Pick your poison, if you will. These come out on sale in September. So excited about that. Another fun thing, of course, is with these new Essential Legends collections. We've got three, of course, we've talked about here on the show today. We also have... Uh, One that's been hinted, you know, possibly could be getting an X-Wing one. I've got a few different ideas on what I would like to see. Guys, what would you like to see? What are some upcoming titles that might (laughs) fit well into this? They're supposed to be like the best Legends books or the easiest to pick up for new readers. Like what are the absolute essential Legends books that might get republished? What do you think, Freddie? You got a pick? I'm going to guess what your pick is. Yeah, I feel like everyone can guess what my pick is. Ruins of Dantooine. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Tom, oh, but Darth we and would Turnus. get a new cover. We would that's, get a new cover. So it's long overdue. Tom that's why I said on, it. Tom <laughs> joked on Twitter that he would want to use the exact same cover. <laughs> no, no. Which is great. Now, Meg, we've got a mock up of this one, don't we? Oh. Uh, Freddie, our, our buddy Jacob in the Utini team, he did some mock ups for us. We Just for you, man, we made this uh. cover. This is what I would like to see personally in the new Trusa Bakura Legends Epic. Dad gummit, what is this thing called? New Legends. Essential Legends. Essential Legends <laughs> collection. <laughs> All right, uh, show it off, Meg. Uh, is 
that. The so way. that's that's like you know what it could look like. But okay. here's here's an even better one. Ready? Nope. Nope. Not that one. Oh, we got it. Nope. There it is. Oh, <laughs> that is so awesome. Space dinosaurs. Dinosaurs oh, with lasers. A I Star Wars story. That is so good. <laughs> I like it. it. It almost reminds me of like uh, the the video game Ark and Turok all mixed into one with some Star Wars mixed yeah. in there with the it's lasers. A Turok. Oh, yeah. Love it. Excellent. Uh, do you have a pick, Trevor? I'd like to see. Obviously, we can't reprint all of Legends, but I'd just like to see the first books of trilogies or series. Yeah. So you know, the first X Wing book, the first uh, mm. Corellian, uh, Corellian trilogy book. I just think that's it's the whole program is it's a really good way to bring new readers back to old books, yeah. and that's yeah. what I love about it. Uh, I demand that they print every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Including I Jedi. <laughs> I Jedi. Well, All right. Well, we've got a mock up of I Jedi. Let's take a look. If we have it. There it is. <laughs> oh, from oh, from Corey's my. legendary reading God. of I Jedi for patrons only. <laughs> if you don't know what this is in referral to, congratulations. I mean, you could if you want to join Utini's Patreon. It's probably still accessible. I don't know. U- Utini's <laughs> proudest moment. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, we've got some others. Uh, you know, obviously Kenobi would be an ideal choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, Kenobi. Yeah, so here's Maul <laughs> yelling Kenobi. That would be just the perfect cover, I think. Uh, any others you got, Meg? Oh yeah, Dark Empire. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Look at that cover. This actually kind of works, doesn't it, for a cover? No. It really does. Honestly, I love it. I need to see that. <laughs> hey, uh, Jared, I know you've got like some back, uh, black market printing press. I'd like to see this. <laughs> Maybe Good we app. could get a version of the script of the original Dark Empire audio drama. Now we're talking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's the, the problem with that, though, if you're listening on audio or reading the text is you're like you don't have the art of, you know, palps looking like this. You know? Imagination's a wonderful thing. <laughs> Quite ripped. Absolutely. Any others, Meg? Um, well, is that exhaust our list? Uh, There's one more, I think. There it is. Oh my god! <laughs> no, not actually a legends book, but I... almost was. This was just for you. I Meg, think everyone should book. point out what's so special about that cover. Oh my god! Some because it's you've subtle. Got a, it's subtle. You've got Jedi Luke holding a cup of noodles I... in his left hand, <laughs> holding I... it like a basketball. Yeah. You know, whoever is responsible for this, I know who you are. And I just want to talk. <laughs> I'm quite uh, proud. This was, uh, I think it was my idea. I don't know. Uh, it might have been his. I can't remember. <laughs> it was yesterday was a crazy day. It's an absolute blur. But, I, I actually but, consider this a quite strong cover. Uh, other than the fact that Luke kind of has like this weird, like open mouth thing like this. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> but for our audio listeners, he's just got his mouth open. Like he's looking confusedly into the distance. <laughs> Ever so slightly agape. Yeah, <laughs> perfect description. <laughs> oh. I'm excited for these. Hey, everybody, I know we've joked a little bit with these. It's been fun. We've had some fun with this. Let us know, though, if you've got some serious ideas on what books you think should belong in the collection, let us know. I saw some good ones over in the uh, the Legends Books Discord channel yesterday. All kinds of good recommendations that I don't have pulled up right here, right now, and I apologize for that. But um, I- I'm so excited for this and uh, can't wait to see the sales reflect the fact that we still have Legends interest, right? We still have Legends interest. And I'm <laughs> um, very excited for this in Lucasfilm's 50th anniversary. Now, we're going to get into the heart of the show. Oh, no, can't do that yet because I've got packages. I've got packages. <laughs> Guys, I-, I saved to open these until our, our mailbag segment. Almost forgot. Oh, my gosh. I got uh, <laughs> our Legends mailbag. I'm thinking about renaming this segment. All right, you ready? Um, here's my idea. Meg? go ahead and start preparing a graphic for this jose ryan get ready here it is all right thraken's thrift store <laughs> getting, getting thrifty with thraken <laughs> thraken sale solo all right something like that working on it it's gonna happen so i'm gonna open these up here's the fun thing i have no earthly idea what is in these packages and helping do the honors today is my lightsaber screwdriver because I don't have a knife in my desk, but I've got this. Here we go. You guys want to take any guesses on what do you think I've got in these two packages? One is from eBay. The other is from Discover Books. What is that? 
All right. Uh, let's see. First guess right off the bat. I'm going to assume you've got a another, let's just say, uh, collector's edition first print of Trusa Bakura. Nope, not Trusa Bakura. <laughs> Definitely didn't order any more of those. I already own three different versions of Trusa Bakura, Freddy. However, that would be great, wouldn't it? Yes. yes. Uh, to get in the this new, um, what are we calling these things? Epic legends collections legends. essential legends essential oh collection. my gosh let's get an easier name come on it's, yeah i think we have one of his mock-up artwork sorry hold on to that meg we'll come to it in a second I'm almost it finished. is one of his packages the glove of darth vader limited edition <laughs> no i've got a limited edition of one of those old uh young reader books i'll, I'll find it and show you in the slide oh oh cool excited meg did you want to take any last guesses before I show off what I've got uh, here. Uh, something that you don't need. Um, <laughs> that you have purchased. Don't anyway. need. All right, here we go. This is the last of the paperback um, film novelizations that I didn't own for my shelves because I'm on the, down to like my last five Legends, non-Legends banner paperbacks for this shelf just in time for them to reprint these in an all-new size. So <laughs> they're going to go on that shelf. This is... The Attack of the Clones. Wow. Take it back. Nice. Yeah, looking, looking, ready for battle, ready for action. Nice. And the other one looks to be a comic. I'm guessing it is a High Republic. Oh, yeah, I remember ordering this. <laughs> it's a Walmart cover of uh, High Republic number one. Oh, oh nice. nice. This puts me That's down nice to only needing two out of the, what, 10 different um, High Republic number ones. Yeah, this one. I went to so many Walmarts to find this. So <laughs> many Walmarts and couldn't find it. So I'm I am still a waiting for my Cavan Scott signed number one exclusive from Forbidden Planet, but I ordered at the end of November. <laughs> oh, yeah. They yeah, still yeah. haven't got this sorted. They just put it in a, a a bottle, and they're just hoping it yeah. gets you. <laughs> um, he, he he said on Twitter. Someone else asked him the same question. He said on Twitter that Forbidden Planet haven't sent them to him to be signed uh, yet. I I may have to cancel the order. I'm not sure that's happening. Oh man, Very interesting. yeah. I just ordered. I just pre-ordered War of the Bounty Hunters number one, signed by Sewell from the same company. And I'm wondering if that is going to happen now that you've said that. So we'll see. We'll see. Do you guys have any new additions to show off on the show? I've uh, not had a new Star Wars package in a while, I'll be honest. It, it got crazy for a while, but then I finished everything. So it's, it's been a bit slow. Nothing wrong with that. You've got plenty of Star Wars stuff. <laughs> yeah. I say, as I open new things. <laughs> Ready? I see you. I see you looking for something. Yeah, I just uh, surprisingly it was missing from my bookshelf, and I I either didn't buy it or I lost it. But I got book three of uh, the Black Fleet, Fleet Crisis, Tyrant's Test. So, completing Tyrant's, that collection. That's the book that I called Tyrant's Nest for twenty years. <laughs> Meg, what do you have to show off for your mailbag segment? Uh, hold on. For Thracken's thrift store. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So last time, um, I had um, a Gar Saxon Funko to show off, which was apparently he was in Legends. I didn't know. My bad. Um, I don't know if he was. was it was he... like debatable. I, I didn't do it. It's like Clone Wars, Legends, Canon, early Clone Okay, Wars. so it's that. Ca okay, well, he's great. I also have, I got a lot of Funkos the other day. This is a um, Heavy Infantry Mandalorian. So nice. there's that. I shall name it him. Ordo. Is that the John Favreau Mandalorian? Uh, Is that the one that he voices? Possibly. Looks like it. It looks I like it, so. yeah. Yeah. This. Hey yeah, guys, that... it's me, John. No, that's Dave. Hold on. I got it. <laughs> that's Dave. Oh <laughs> my god. No, I can't do John. Well, maybe Ooh. next week. If Meg does Ventress, I'll do John. Oh, oh stop reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're always adding to our collections and we love that. Now, in today's episode, we are, of course, talking about one of the, the sadder kind of, uh, you know, things that happens from time to time in the world of publishing. Not every book that is conceptualized actually makes it to print. 
Um, of course, we just had this happen in recent weeks. In recent Star Wars news, Adam Christopher's Mandalorian book was canceled. Did you guys catch wind of this? It's kind of kind of sad, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of these cancellations and and you know they really affect the the author as well. We'll we'll talk more about it. Yeah, that's a good point to make. Good point to make because we we're not entitled to any of these fictional stories. Real people get paid real money in order to take real time out of their real lives to write these. This is also a company owned by people who are not the writers themselves, not necessarily the creatives. This has to fit into a larger narrative. There's marketing concerns and publishing, you know, getting the, the books to fit into the, onto the pages in just the right way. And you got to get them to the printing press. And obviously with the COVID-19 pandemic, we just saw how that was shut down for a couple of months. So there's all kinds of different factors, all kinds of different people around um, along the chain where one thing can go wrong and a book can fall by the wayside. I want to be really clear. We as Legends fans are not entitled to any of these books. If you wish that some of these books were actually written and published and wish reach their final form um you can voice that without harassing the powers that be in the publishing industry right that's not the jedi way let's put light into the galaxy and not hate do you think that about sums it up freddie yeah it really does right like you're lucky enough to get what you're getting now uh, and the fact that they're they're making these these new books and you know there, there's reasons for everything there's there's business reasons for why they pick certain things why they cancel certain things you know, looking in hindsight for some of these stories, you might, you might see the overall timeline and vision, uh, you know, 10 years from now, where, where they were thinking about these things currently. So, you know, it, it is what it is. And you just have to realize that, that, you know, even even in, in uh, let's just say my, my work, right, jobs get scrapped, you don't, yeah. you don't always work on them. And, and that's just the nature of business. And, and that's, that's just how it is, right? Yeah, um, attachment. It's almost like yeah. attachment is the problem here. <laughs> and in the we case of all... a Mandalorian book, Delray have said, uh, Adam Christopher's now working on a new yeah. Star Wars project. So it was never about quality. It was obviously about, you know, behind the scenes stuff we'll never know yeah. about. And all and it means okay. is we have something new coming. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can dream. And there's fan fiction. All right. So there's no nothing holding you back from writing your own book. That's the fun thing here. Um, this is a fictional <laughs> galaxy. None of these are um, true stories. And these stories can change. They can evolve. Um, things happen. Sometimes real life intersects with these this fictional universe in a way where a book falls by the wayside. In in the case with these ten books we're going to be talking about on today's episode, some of these do in fact fall by the wayside. Some of them exist with. Uh, cover art it was made and finished sometimes we've got nothing more than an idea or a description or a rough outline and in the case of a couple of these the book was written and never made it to the shelves and we're going to talk in detail and what i would like to consider we're making legends history today guys we are going to be doing a round table we are the first people ever in the history of the world to do a round table <laughs> on this star wars book this is Heart of the Jedi. Of course, I published it. My, I printed it myself just because I had a concussion, couldn't look at the screen, needed to have it on actual paper, and I wanted it for my shelves. Of course, the author, Kenneth C. Flint, put it out on the internet. He's just like, hey, I don't want any money for this. I just want the Legends fans to be able to see what could have been. And I said, okay, I see your free book, and I raise you a round table. And so here we are on today's episode. We are going to get into... Uh, a brief discussion, maybe not the, the two part, you know, two, three hour round <laughs> table over this. We are going to do the first ever. This is exciting, isn't it, Freddie? We're the first people ever to do a round table podcast over Heart of the Jedi. Yeah, I'm excited. I, you know, never, never released uh, truly. Contract was never even drafted. So this is uh, a Lost Legends book for sure. Yeah, uh, Trevor makes a good point in the Slack here um, that this was published for free on a website yeah, the only reason i haven't said the website's name trevor is i don't have it off the top of my head where was this published trevor uh oh are we are we gonna yeah, yeah you it? can say it yeah okay uh we so didn't ask permission star it's fine. wars star wars timeline.net okay yeah so this entire book is available there can see flint partner with them to just release this out into the world uh thanks guys for of i course... do need to point out that it is a Star Wars timeline website. <laughs> Our Utini timeline is far better. Superior. <laughs> <laughs> Both in terms of accuracy and beauty. But uh, we don't have Absolutely. our own exclusive Especially Star beauty. Wars book. <laughs> First on the list, 
we've got 10 we're going to be talking about today. First on the list is something I just recently learned about and is really tragic that we didn't get this book. In fact, Lee Brackett, uh, who is in, who is famous for having been one of the script writers on The Empire Strikes Back, um, she was signed on to write either a Leia book or a Leia trilogy. I don't remember. It was going to be in tandem with Brian Daly's Han Solo trilogy. And then she passed away tragically before mm. she could get around to writing these. Wouldn't it have been amazing in Legends history to get an equally good and um, you know equally important trilogy about Leia at the same time that we got one about Han? I've never heard this. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? This is completely brand new information to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's bad. I love surprises, Trevor. <laughs> May that's she rest crazy. in peace. Yeah. Lee Brackett was an absolute legend in the Star Wars universe. Um, of course, being a woman of color who uh, contributed to the Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back absolutely has the best writing out of any Star Wars movie, second only maybe to Attack of the Clones, but is uh, you know great for the fact that that um, there were some truly, truly visionary people working on the writing in that film. And Lee Brackett's one of them. I would have loved to have had this. Uh, may, she, may she rest in peace. Um, Freddie, what's next on the list of the Legends books that almost were? Yeah, we've got the Nightfall trilogy, which which it seemed as if, uh, I mean, there's a lot of development, the cancellation, they've got the plot all lined up. I'm looking at the, uh, fa the Star Wars fandom website at the moment. And... Uh, yeah, what, what do you think about this one? It's a three book cycle. I, I think a lot of it, because I know we had covers for that book and it was supposed to focus on Danny Queeks as part of a new Jedi Order. Yeah, we might have um, a cover for this. Do you have this one, Meg? Nightfall? Uh... Keep talking, Trevor. You're good. But I think it was a, I think a lot of it was condensed into the, the Dark Tide duology by Michael A. Stackpole, because he was due to write this. So I think he essentially removed the Danny Kui subplot and reformatted what he had. That's yeah. one. Look There's at that. that great That's legends art. I love that cover. new Jedi Order art. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think Fabio is there? Ooh, is that Zek? That's some, that's some nice long hair. That's got to be the Jedi. Yeah, Zek. I, I think it's Zek. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I think yeah. this ended up as the Dark Tide duology. So okay. we may not have got all of it, but we got some of it. This, yeah. of course, was going to be three books, Jedi Storm, Jedi Fire, and Jedi Blood, which is great. I love those names. Okay, the Jedi Knight's name is Jor Rollin. Yeah, so not Zek. Uh, Zek is the other long-haired, dark and broody, super muscular Legends man from the new Jedi Order. Excuse me. My apologies. Uh, of course, I don't feel too broken up about this because new Jedi Order is already 19 <laughs> books long. I'm not crying about the fact that it wasn't 22 books long. Are you, Freddie? <laughs> no, no. I, I think we're good. <laughs> okay. Uh, Trevor, what is next on the list? Uh, so, Escape from Dagu, or Dagu. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. I call it Dagu. So, this would be a Dagu. <laughs> I call it so Dagu. So, this would have been a Clone Wars. <laughs> <laughs> this would have been the Clone Wars novel. Uh, William C. Deitz, who actually wrote the. Kyle Katarn graphic novellas from yeah. back in the day to go with the Jedi Knight video games. And I remember there was a whole synopsis that was released for this. I think this was fairly far along in the schedule as well until it got cancelled. Yeah. Um, I don't remember too much about it, but the picture reminds me that it was about Shakti. I think she was imprisoned and someone had to break her out. But yeah, so this was one of the Clone Wars novels that was supposed to come out as part of that multimedia program. Yeah, you can tell that the the art is actually quite close to the final version, if not the final version itself. So this was uh, pretty far along compared to some of the other books. I have heard rumors that there is a manuscript out there on the internet. I have not verified <laughs> just how legitimate <laughs> it is, but I will be after the show for sure, for sure. Uh, this is interesting because honestly, there's just not enough female representation in, you know, who, who get their own novel. Like where they are the main character in Legends. So I would have liked to have seen this about Shakti for that reason. Also love William C. Deitz's Dark Forces trilogy. Really, really love those. I know a lot of people don't, but I, you know, there's some of my most beloved Star Wars books, at least the audio dramas. I've, I've not made it through the actual <laughs> graphic novels themselves. The, the plot synopsis on this is interesting. 
that the shroud of the dark side has fallen and the clone wars have begun thousands of solar systems are defecting to the separatist confederacy of independent systems led by the charismatic fallen jedi master count dooku but the threat of the galactic republic does not end there for the malevolent count answers to a shattery sith lord blah 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 you get it sinister agenda the swamp planet Daegu, a remote place where the confederacy has chosen to build a military base using prisoners of war seethes with discontent the slave laborers including clone troopers are determined to escape and the native reptilian rebels nope native reptilian rybets have sworn to regain their freedom count dooku has learned that among the prisoners is a courier with information that could bring down the republic dooku has selected artel dark don't you just love that that the bad guy's name is dark yeah <laughs> a most cunning and capable dark jedi to apprehend the courier but artel dark doesn't know that shak t the legendary jedi master is among the prisoners nor can he fathom how awesome a weapon the desire for liberty can be even against seemingly impossible odds sounds interesting doesn't it yeah that's especially, a great synopsis <laughs> yeah is. especially the ribbits can't wait to see them <laughs> <laughs> excellent uh, third on our list of canceled Star Wars books is the Monsters and Aliens trilogy. It would have been by Robert J. Sawyer. Uh, it was originally a trilogy of novels in 1995 that was canceled. It, it would have been um, the, the first book in the trilogy would have been called Alien Exodus. Really kind of interesting. The idea is that there's the trilogy that uh, has humans from the 25th century Earth. <laughs> Displaced. Yes, this you've this heard of this. This ties Star Wars back into real world. Yeah, uh. you've heard of this. <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh man, I, I'm not sad that we didn't get this, but I kind of love the <laughs> early to mid '90s for really not understanding Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, the, the first book got published. There's a published book, but uh, oh, last okay. minute they kind of drew it away from Star Wars. Interesting. I'm sure okay. it's called Alien Exodus, yeah, and yeah. only the first got published, and it it was supposed to detail how humans populated planets like Tatooine and Corellia and Alderaan. Okay. Yeah, it's madness. Absolutely madness. I'll be madness. checking out eBay after this, <laughs> trying to find that sucker. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Freddie, next on the list is Blood Oath. What is this? Yeah. So Blood Oath, uh, it's as Cunningham described it. I believe that's the author. Yeah, uh, Elaine Cunningham. Yeah, it's an adventure story that also contained political intrigue, humor, and romance. And... Uh, yeah, th this one looks pretty interesting. I, I think uh, a lot of these books, even though they did get canceled, uh, some of their stories made it into canon. Maybe it made it into a, a new or, or a different story or, a, you know, like maybe like a, a Jedi file of some sort that they used to do for marketing. But yeah, what do you think about this one? I love it. Look at that cover. It's got Zek looking, looking big and proud. There's Zek. See, he was bound to make an appearance. Got a little Zek. <laughs> yeah. Um, Got a couple of uh, roguish looking ladies here. Love the green font on the cover. If you're an audio listener, I'm sorry. We've got some cover images on some of these. Um, <laughs> this is excellent. Excellent. I uh, love Zach. Would have liked to have seen him, you know, mm -hmm. basically get his own full length, you know, where he is the main character, New Jedi Order book. Is it New Jedi Order? Or is it after New Jedi Order? 2009? I think this was an in between it because a lot of the oh, storyline yeah. carried over. Sure. into the legacy of the forced series so when zek turned up there was a whole backstory that this book was supposed to be about but then yeah so i'm reading that we that we this, got. it was uh set two years after invincible okay okay oh, so wow. maybe so even after... legacy of fate yeah that would be a good point to have a zek story this looks good elaine cunningham she wrote let's see dark journey she wrote a short right? story uh yep and she wrote The Crystal, a short story okay. with Jane the Solo as well, possibly. Interesting. Yeah, this one looks interesting to me. It might be my top three or four that I would have liked to have seen. Now, Trevor, you are making a case to nix the, last, the next book from the list. <laughs> I'm instead, going to make you talk about it. Tell us about so said, Supernatural I'm, I'm, Encounters. I'm sending Jared these messages in Slack. I mean, he's just calling me on it. That's twice now. We've got okay. a 10 book list. We're not about to cut one and have nine. <laughs> <laughs> so the next book on Jarrah's list is Supernatural Encounters, The Trial and Transformation. And I noticed he hasn't included the whole title here, so I have to do the rest of it off the top of my head. Oh, oh, yeah. The Trial and Transformation of Arthur 
Hextradun. Hextrafon. Who yeah. is, he, yes, he's the in-universe Star Wars historian where all the West End game stuff, the Galaxy Guides, were narrated by him. Oh, now, so Supernatural Encounters is a sequel to Cult Encounters, which is an in-universe blog post that was uh, published on the official site. This new one, I say new, it's old, but maybe getting released soon. It's being done away from official licensing. He okay. had the work done. He has since revisited the work to enhance it and add more to it. Has and will really? be releasing it for the world to see. No but way! It's, but it's no longer officially licensed. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, original yeah. text was, but never saw the light of day. Sure. So it, for me, it's in a kind of gray area now about... It's almost fan fiction. Right. Yeah, it, because every, is everything he's had is, isn't, right. isn't officially licensed. Don't get me wrong. I'm looking forward to it. And everything I've read about this project, it sounds so dense. It's essentially an entire history of the more supernatural, almost celestial aspect of the Star Wars universe. Yeah. Going back thousands of years before A New Hope, right up to. Mm. So it'll cover ancient Sith ghosts and yes. demons and going right up to Avalos <laughs> and really, really okay. dense. I think it's something like 3,000 pages at this point. That's my guess. Oh, no. It's, Three, it's, I won't be reading that at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a crazy, crazy thing. That's for hardcore readers only. Oh, wow. Yeah, for sure. All right. Now, Meg, I want you to talk about the next one on the list. This one is is in particular one I want to toss over to you because you, of course, came on Legends Look Back way back in the day for two episodes covering four Republic Commando, Imperial Commando books by Kieran Travis. Uh, obviously, we talked about this a little bit on those shows. You can go back and listen. They were great because they've got Meg. And we are talking about what book that was canceled from that series? Yeah, the... um. Imperial Commando 2. So like when it became, when it went from Republic Commando to Imperial Commando, there was one of those and then there were no more. Um, there was supposed to be. Uh, but uh, yeah, we only got one. So uh, yeah. Uh, you which... know, Karen Travis has on her blog talked about what she had planned for this book. So mm -hmm. if you at least want a basic idea of the major plot movements, um, she does talk about those. So that is something you could look into if it's interesting to you. I know this is probably out of this entire list. Trevor, Freddie, do you think that this is the most, maybe besides Sword of the Jedi, like the most decried canceled Legends book? I think it's so. probably the most controversial. Yeah. Controversial? Okay. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Of course, she was also slated to write a Boba Fett book that was canceled. That's not on the list. I guess that could have bumped Supernatural Encounters. So, you know, now we've got 11. <laughs> So we got to cancel something else. No, no, no. All right, we'll leave it on there. <laughs> we'll leave it on there. Um, uh, that would be interesting to me, of course. We're about to get this new Republic Commando collectible deluxe edition thing. So I'm especially like, oh, I would love to have this book. I, I don't think it ever existed in final form. I don't think she had actually written the book. Although, you know, a lot of people <laughs> would beg to differ on that. I, I believe she herself has gone on record and saying she never actually sat down to write the whole thing. So don't go trying to dig for it on the internet. Next on the list, of course, I already hinted at it, is what book, Freddy? Sword of the Jedi. So this one I, I had no idea about, and, and it, it kind of makes sense why they canceled it. Uh, this was written by Christy Golden, not to be confused with Chris Golden or any of the, of the other Goldens in the uh, Star Wars universe. Yeah, Christopher Golden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but this was canceled as Star Wars was transitioning over to Disney Publishing, and and uh, featured Jedi Jedi Master Jaina Solo fell herself, and her husband so cool. uh, Jagged fell. Yeah, it, it, this would have been really cool to see. It looks like they had some cover art, and the cover art itself looks amazing. Uh, very very modern. Uh, it happened this in the chronology of everything. This was around forty four A B Y, just to give you guys an idea. Yeah, way late in the timeline. Yeah, and, and you know, yeah, this was a big one. Yeah, this was a big one. This was supposed to be a trilogy, right? Yeah, and um, it it uh, it was all based off the fact that Jaina was knighted, sort of a Jedi by Luke Skywalker during the, the New Jedi Order series, and there was so much hype for this. And then that's when the buyout happened, and we just never saw it. 
Yeah. Now, there was just yesterday in the Legends Books Discord channel with all this new Legends fervor, there was some debate and discussion about this, about like, well, hey, just because we're getting new reprints of these old Legends novels, do you think we could get some of these old Legends novels that were canceled released? And uh, of course, our buddy Tom from Del Rey jumped in on the discussion very, very tactfully and respectfully, I thought, to kind of talk about some of these rumors and these hopes. And he said specifically about Sword of the Jedi, that Sword of the Jedi was never completed. It was never written. A fully fleshed outline doesn't even exist. Uh, perhaps, you know, there's bits of an outline, general concept, but that's all that got made. And so, you know, it, it really, there's rumors that it exists, but, you know, from the behind the scenes, pulling the curtain back, it doesn't. But th that's not to say that we can't want this. It's not to say that this wouldn't have been interesting, but we got a ton of Legends books in continuity. I mean, I've been trying to get through the entire history of Legends books. I started, uh, what, 10 years ago, uh, back at the <laughs> beginning, and <laughs> close to finishing. But, I mean, there's so much to read. It's okay that this ultimately didn't come to light. I, I think sort of the any... Jedi itself has become a legend. It really is. Absolutely. It really had the story of the book, the trilogy is a legend itself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, Trevor, talk about number, uh, talk about uh, Lightsider, the next book on our list. I've messed up the numbering at this point in the show notes. So I apologize. <laughs> Lightsider, of course, is a particular interest to me because it ties into Dark Empire, doesn't it? It, it does. Your, your favorite series. And Lightsider was supposed to be um, a, a novel, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. It's, novella, it's been a while since right? I looked into Lightsider. Yeah, yeah just, and it was, just a novella. It was due to take place between Dark Empire 2 and Dark Empire... No, between Dark Empire 1 and 2. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while since I read it. So it's to do with uh, Luke Skywalker meeting uh, Cam Solisar? Yeah. How do you pronounce his name, Jared? Yeah. I say Solisar. Solisar. And yeah. Sir Solisar. They, they almost bond over a game of chess. So right. they have, they, it's almost like the Star Trek 3D hollow chess. Uh, yeah, it's like it's force chess. They, it's chess yeah. when you move a piece, you have a force vision. So, <laughs> so I, I think the original plan was this to be released in the West End Games Adventure Journal to bridge the gap between the two stories. Okay. For whatever reason, it wasn't released. And I know that the writer um, of the Dark Empire series, Tom Bikes, hasn't always had the best relationship with Lucasfilm. Um, but this is another one of those things where it's if you want to look hard enough in the dark web, it is out there. It's there for you to read as a sort of a, a 16 page script version. And it, it fleshes out the gap a bit, but it's not a fully fledged story. I think the one I read was 64 stretch. pages. I mean, it was really it's, like, it's not a full book, but it is longer than a short story. It's right in that sweet spot of something you can read in the afternoon. It, yeah, it. uh Oh, it's not as good as Dark Empire, unfortunately. Yeah. In my what opinion. is? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I know that that Tom Tom Veitch, Veitch, Veitch. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce Say his Veitch. name. Veitch. Uh, he was he did condense it though, right, into a two issue Empire's End. Hit the the plot. No, of, of it's, not the, it's, not, it's the not the same. It's not the same. But uh, yeah, it's it's interesting how how it seems like George. I'm I'm looking at the. Uh, the notes here it looks like he he approved of it before the edit contract and once he found out that he approved of it without a contract he terminated it <laughs> yeah unfortunately but that, that is, is another lost case. legends is that dark empire 3 was originally a six issue story mm. and kind of at the last minute they got told to to yeah. condense it which is why we only got the two, two issue empires and the yeah. whole story up so interesting. No, Empire's End it, is not quite as good as the other two in the in the series, of course, because it was, you know, it was the Cliff's Notes version. And it doesn't have the iconic <laughs> yes. Cam Kennedy watercolor art either. Yeah. All right, we are getting close to the end of our list. We've talked about some amazingly interesting books and some books that, yeah, I'm not too disappointed, <laughs> got canceled. <laughs> um, Trevor, you said there's one more you want to add that you want to surprise us with here. There is. So I don't know who's aware of the Ryder Wyndham Adventures in Hyperspace Young Adult Novels. You lost me somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> so in Legends, we had these, we wouldn't really even class them as young adult novels. They're junior novels, the Jedi Apprentice books, the Jedi yeah. Quest books. Well, there's two Adventures in Hyperspace books written by Ryder Wyndham. I can't quite see the covers from, from here. But anyway, <laughs> 
there was a third, there was two more commissioned. It was a four book contract. And the third book got cancelled at the last minute, but it was fully written. And again, this book is available if you go looking hard enough. It's a Han and Chewy adventure before a new hope. Okay. Uh, Jab is involved. It's called Adventures in Hyperspace, The Big Switch. And if you find it on the internet, you can find that there's actually a synopsis for the fourth book as well. Uh, the whole book was written, illustrated, but due to low sales on the first two books, they just decided never to publish yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Uh, Trevor coming in with his trivia. Gotta love it. Excellent. Yeah. Now, finally on our list, we are actually going to be covering just a handful of questions here about a book that we actually got a chance to read, and that is the much-anticipated, highly hyped The Heart of the Jedi. Let's go ahead and talk about this cover first. I mean, these Kenneth C. Flint does go on the record in saying this is not the final rendition of the cover, but it was... Uh, you know the the early concept version of this this really fits in well doesn't it with like the early bantam era uh, style of covers yeah this oh, yeah. this book screams bantam era yeah drew sturzen did some great work for legends is this drewson uh, yeah i think so yeah. just yeah, just looking at it wow Wow. It's, it's excellent. I love the cover. That's part of the reason I needed to have it printed. And I've thought about getting it blown up into a massive poster. Let's be honest. I love this cover. It's once again, look at this face on that Luke's got going on here, looking off in the distance with his mouth open. Looking confused. <laughs> it's a very Ever iconic so Slightly look agape. <laughs> slightly agape. A Star Wars story. Um, this, of course, comes from the author Kenneth C. Flint. I believe an Irish author. I could be wrong. He also mentions having gone to uh, college in Nebraska. So, you know, who knows? But uh, this, of course, was supposed to come out in 1993. He had sent a draft to his editor in 1992. It was supposed to be set immediately after Return of the Jedi. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, doesn't Truce Bakura happen immediately after <laughs> Return of the Jedi? And Freddie, let's talk about this for a second, man. Truce Bakura is the book that bumped this from the list. The legend goes, the legend goes is that the editor who was you know uh, handing out jobs here for what star wars books were next in the bantam timeline they're just getting started with these books of course air to the empire comes out in 1991 it's fairly er, fairly early in this had signed on kenneth c flint and then instead gave a friend book one in Mm -hmm. the chronology which bumped this basically (laughs) from chronology right uh freddie are you disappointed are you disappointed (laughs) <laughs> that Crusade Bakura bumped this from <laughs> Legends. Well, I guess in an alternate timeline, this is the book I picked up in uh, in another universe, right? Heart of the Jedi, because this is the one that got picked. <laughs> yeah, that's in the Baron Stain Bears universe, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it's a fairly interesting story because it seems like it was just all political. And, and the only reason why one got picked over the other was because of that. It wasn't, you know, I mean, it, when you read this book and the content, I don't think it went through the full process of the editing and whatnot right but, uh, no but uh as it reads now it's it's not a terrible book you know the, the heart of the jedi I, I haven't finished it i i've got about 100 some pages left i i got to the the part we'll talk about hopefully uh soon with oh the, uh... <laughs> i know what you're talking about i'm so excited yes <laughs> um this book of course uh, as it was released on what star wars timeline.net uh, was in 368 pages, 306, I'm so close, 369 page. what a perfect, yeah, 368 pages. So it's a good, it's a good read. Um, it's, it's pretty breezy, not the most difficult prose to get through. It really struck me as the same kind of writing style as uh, Kevin J. Anderson's Jedi Academy trilogy, like the same kind of breezy, quick, fast read. This, of course, is uh, the basic idea is, hey, there's a truce happening between the New Republic and the Empire, and yet there's one Imperial named Thrakus. Is that right? Tharkus? Tharkus. Tharkus, yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't want this. He, of course, sends a changeling, kind of like a, kind of like what we had in Attack of the Clones. I forget the actual name of the, the species. A shapeshifter to follow Luke and impersonate different people on his journey in order to ultimately help Tharkus get his hands on this infamous heart of the jedi and that's where i just got in the book i'm like 60 pages from finishing luke goes way off into the unknown regions um make some friends along the way they get blown up it's a whole thing 
Um, <laughs> it's got everything. It's got Luke jousting on the back of a bantha against sand people. It's got an, an Ewok smuggler who speaks <laughs> basic, but I'm pretty sure the author is writing him to have an Australian accent. Yes. <laughs> it's got uh, it's got R2-D2 giving Luke a bath, for crying out loud. I mean, this book <laughs> is amazing. Amazing. You never got to that point, did you, Trevor? You missed it. You didn't get to the I, bath. I, I couldn't finish it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I tried. I really tried. And it just, it gives you an idea of how different the entire Star Wars publishing could have gone because back in the early 90s, we, we were on that pivot. We had the Throne trilogy on one side. We had the Jedi Prince series on the other side. <laughs> and that's kind of where things were going. They were both published around the same time. Right. This, this would have come out right in the middle of that. Yeah. And that would have tipped that scale one way. I'm, yeah. I'm personally very glad we went the other. I don't agree. I actually prefer this. I'm going to go on the record and say I prefer this to the truce at Makura. So every Legends Look Back reader needs to oh. go get their hands on this and oh. read it, and then we're going to have a showdown. Oh, I want to know the no. vote on who thinks that Truce Bakura is the better book, who thinks Heart of the Jedi is the better book. Are you Team Jared or Team Freddy? Obviously, Trevor is Team Freddy. Meg, you're going to have to read this thing, and you're going to have to join my side oh. so that we can level oh, the scales. No. I mean, I mean, yay. <laughs> what sounds most interesting to you, Meg? R2 giving Luke a bath, Luke jousting with sand people on the back of Banthas, or uh, what was the other thing I said? Oh, did I mention that Luke goes back to Obi-Wan Kenobi's hut to retrieve a, a Force-sensitive bowl? <laughs> oh, what? the bowl, yes, there's a bowl. <laughs> Which of those sounds there's most interesting? Which of those makes you want to read this the most? I, I think that's when it lost me, was with the Force Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, all of the above, I just... Sure, let's hey, go Hey, R2, for it. a little higher. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to actually read that excerpt. All right, I'm going to read that excerpt. While I look for it, I do want to say, of course, that um, it's got some really fun things where Luke goes back to Tatooine to basically re re um, retrace his steps in terms of... And there was of... a lot of similarity between that and the beginning of Shadows of the Empire about okay. his return to Tatooine and back to Obi-Wan Kenobi. There was a lot of similarity with, with those scenes. Um, I don't know whether that's an idea that they'd ask Steve Perry to revisit because it yeah. came across so well in this book or okay. whether he just did it independently, but it was but definitely, definitely some of the stronger came across stuff to this. me. Yeah. Luke goes back to the most Eisley can, can cantina and has a rematch with uh, Dr. Evazan and Panda Baba. What? He's like, Hey, I don't like you any more than last time. <laughs> it's yes. amazing. I blocked all this out of my memory. It was only a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> no, I'm laughing, and it sounds like I'm making fun of it. I'm not. I liked it. It was the author is so clearly in on the joke, like he knows that it's goofy. It's intentionally yeah. funny, I think. All right, I think. <laughs> no, I'm gonna read the excerpt that Freddie is hinting at. All right, here we go. This is from page 228, where R2 gives Luke a bath. <laughs> he finished sponging off his front and looked to the <laughs> silently waiting droid. Hey, R2, would you mind getting my back for me? He asked. The droid obediently rolled forward to the edge of the tub. A small hatch in his midsection popped open and a rod with a claw and uh, telescoped out. The claw took hold of a long handle of a brush sitting on the tub's side. I need some saxophone music playing in the background. Maybe some, uh, some candle lighting. Can you do that in post, Meg? It moved the brush forward to contact Luke's back. Luke shifted around to get in the best position, giving directions as he did. Okay, R2, a little higher. A little higher. Lift. Down. Ah, right there. The droid began scrubbing in a vigorous up and down motion. Oh, easy. Not so rough, R2, Luke cautioned. I don't want the skin off. And there are a few tender spots back there. The young Jedi's back was indeed much marked with bruises and lacerations from his recent scrapes. The droid reduced the pressure of its brushing and avoided the spots too. Better, Luke said. Ah, very good. All right, I'm going to stop for now. I need, I need to quote no. Meg. What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> heart of the Jedi is happening. The heart of the Jedi. The back of the Jedi. So we can call it. The, the bath of the Jedi? All right. Um, I've got a couple more excerpts. Uh, first, let's talk about the first chapter. Okay, the first chapter. You've at least read that, right, uh, Trevor? Yes. Yeah. 
first chapter is so oddly disjointed from the rest of the book, which makes me think, as a good Bible scholar, that with source criticism here, that it's added later. I think it's a later edition in order to yeah. try to give punch to the opening. It reads almost just like the season finale of season two of The Mandalorian, doesn't it? Luke is just slicing and dicing, and he's got yeah. the black cloak and the hood down, and it's like told where they're watching the green lightsaber blazing, and then the chapter ends with whoosh, Luke pulling back the hood and revealing he is, in fact, Luke Skywalker, and he is a Jedi. Yeah. I mean, how similar was that? That was some, that was some really interesting stuff. That, that was some interesting stuff about this book is about how Luke, he's, he's pushing back against the whole hero of a rebellion thing. He's, he doesn't want to be going around killing people, but yeah. the war has put him in that position. And I thought that was a really interesting take that, in Legends, we don't see that Luke until much later in the timeline. Yeah. So think, that, that was that was a really interesting take. I feel like he takes more of the side of the, the current, the canon Luke, where he he's yeah, you know, all of the drama and a trauma that he went through, he's he's trying to sort through it, right? And he's trying to figure it out. And you know, Han Solo and Leia are trying to get him back to, you know, join the join the group again and go on the adventures. And he just wants to chill out and and figure out what's going on. It's almost like he's having PTSD. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, and it, in some ways it adds up plot wise for me in the grander scheme of Luke's arc in Legends because we just covered the Jedi Academy trilogy. In this, Luke says, I don't have a right to push my beliefs onto anyone until I have learned more about the Jedi, until I have sorted out whether or not I actually want to perpetuate the jedi order and so he goes on this crazy quest and it gets wacky but the heart of that idea is compelling to me i feel like luke needs that extra step before the jedi academy trilogy uh, which i haven't really found satisfying in legends it's okay i've got it all up in my mind brain and my uh, <laughs> my head canon my head legends as i like to call it um, but the but other thing i think the author does is capture the voice of leia and han brilliantly in this yes. book the banter yeah, the, the back part. and forth I think he does that. There's one bit where um, Han turns around and calls Leia sweetheart. And she just says, thank you. And he's like, for what? She's like, for not calling me princess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, it was just a really nice moment. And he was like, oh, I didn't? Uh, sorry, princess. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <it's great. laughs> Absolutely great. Um, I, I do want to, of course, talk about the villains in this book, Tharkis. In, in post-Return of the Jedi Legends, some of the Imperials wage war on the New Republic with a variety of strategies, right? Okay, you've got Thrawn. He wages war with artwork. Isart, no, okay. Now, Thrawn's actual plan is to find a crazy dark Jedi and manipulate him into using battle meditation for your fleet, find the lost fleet of dreadnoughts, and staff them with a clone army. Ingenious. Um, Isard, of course, her idea is to poison Coruscant with a deadly disease and hand it over to the New Republic and hijack the galaxy's supply of Bacta. Pretty ingenious plot. Dala, cause as much damage as you can with your leftover Star Destroyers <laughs> and various other super weapons. <laughs> Death Stars, Star Destroyers, doesn't matter. Let's blow stuff up. Tharkis- And then become leader of the entire Republic. Yeah, 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 yeah. we'll that. get there. Um, Tharkis, his plan is this. Befriend a monster who swallows your enemies. <laughs> also employ a shapeshifter to follow Luke Skywalker and uh, try to bamboozle Luke into giving you access into controlling the very force itself. Uh, out of all these post-Return of the Jedi villains, how do you think Tharkis fits in? Uh, we didn't even mention you know, Palpatine. His plan is just like, keep coming back. You know, <laughs> uh, take over Leia's unborn children. All right, I don't want to talk about that. Um, what do you think of Tharkis's plan, guys? It's very imperial. It see it fits. It fits. <laughs> <laughs> it really seemed to me a lot like uh, who was the villain in Glove of Darth Vader, the guy with the the glove of Darth Vader. You know, the guy with the force, the lightning fingers, sparkle fingers. Oh, not uh, Trioculus. Uh, trioculus. The trioculus. No, no, no. Trioculus. Not trioculus. The other one, the villain, the one who had the dastardly look on his face. <laughs> Oh man, I, I you've lost me. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. His his plan is like he keeps using all these artificial methods into, uh, you know, backdooring his way into controlling the the empire. Uh, but the other name? thing about this book, which is weird, is that the Imperial Senate exists. Yeah, when it was okay. disbanded in right. A New Hope, and you got all <laughs> yeah, these yeah. Sort of senators suing for peace, and I was thinking there shouldn't be any senators. 
Is it Grand Moff Hissa? Is that who we're I think it might be here? Hissa? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's Hissa. Oh yeah. man, look at this guy's face. Just Google him, everybody. We <laughs> <laughs> he's got like the sharp teeth. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah. So he really struck me a lot like Tharkas in here. Kind of similar yeah. to have these different versions, three different versions, honestly, if you count part of the Jedi, of what the initial truce after Return of the Jedi would have looked like between the Imperials and the New Republic. You got Galeva Darth Vader. It's got that big truce scene in the stadium with the sparkle fingers. You've got the um, the truce at Bakura with the dinosaurs. And then you've got this where uh, there's one Imperial who, of course, doesn't want to play along. Other Imperials want to see the truce successful. So they befriend Leia and go off on the Falcon on the mission. And some of them try to, to woo Leia and Han gets all salty about it. It's, <laughs> it's excellent. Now, there's one other character we've got to talk about. I've mentioned him briefly. That's Thatch, the Ewok pirate. So good. Is he the best forgotten Legends character ever, do you think? <laughs> I, I think they need to make a, at least... Uh... I'd like to hear an audio version of what Thatch would sound like because I have a feeling you're right. He does sound Australian. Uh, but uh, I'd like to see a, a little... a little. Well, you know what? I'm just going to take like a wicket and do some painting, make a Thatch Ewok uh, card yeah, and let's see your Yeah, let's see your Thatch fan art. The Australian... Uh, Luke's Australian basic-speaking Ewok pirate pilot who's Luke's bestie in Heart of the <laughs> Jedi. Yep. It's so great. Um, I've, I've got a little rant here for a second. All right, like set a timer for 30 seconds. Don't let me go too long on this. I've got a bit of a, like a hang up in, in Star Wars whenever Ewoks can speak basic. <laughs> I've been trying to watch the, the Ewoks TV show from the 80s that just hit Disney Plus, and I freaking hate it. I mean, I just can't <laughs> stand listening to Ewoks speak English. I want them to say yub nub. And that's about it, all right? Um, I don't want to see my Ewoks doing anything other than, like, hang gliding, uh, <laughs> slingshotting, dancing, playing drums on, on Stormtrooper helmets. I, I don't want to... Listen, wanna, I've got to throw this out there. Since I don't want to hear them Disney, talking. In, in since English. you're talking Disney+, Plus, have you got to Caravan of Courage for Battle of Endor yet? Watch I put tonight. Caravan Watch of Courage tonight. on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I put At Caravan of Courage one. on for 10 minutes yesterday. I... <laughs> It's 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 a ride. It's a we're, ride. We've we've if you want to talk doing if you want to talk um mouths slightly agape, the Ewok <laughs> puppets just have a fixed teeth grin. They have no moving lips. It's terrifying. We're gonna do we're, we're talking about doing a Legends Look Back Caravan of Courage watch along where we do an audio commentary. It, it, possibly. We'll see. I'm gonna watch it tonight. <laughs> And see, my wife doesn't know we're watching it tonight. We're watching it tonight. And we're going to see <laughs> how it goes. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, you know, I don't love it when Ewoks can talk. Put it on my business card. You know, put it in my Twitter bio. Ewoks should speak Ewokese, not basic. All right? Like, where, where are they learning basic? Like, there was a recent canon book where there was an Ewok hanging out with Han Solo. Was he, like, a slicer? Hated it. Yeah, it's I just, like an Ewok I don't, hacker. I don't want my Ewoks hacking. I don't want them smuggling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peak puff. <laughs> I don't want my Ewoks doing anything but eating Imperial corpses. All right. Um, what's your favorite part of the book? You know, we, whether you finished it or not, did you have a favorite moment? Uh, well, I mean, the R2 bath part was, when you told me about that, I had literally just read it. And I was like, that was the best part I ever read. That passage, ah, uh, right it's there. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> so good. It's so clearly written as like intentionally goofy cringe, like, yeah. truly, right? Yeah. Truly, it is. Okay, uh, Trevor, did you have a favorite moment? Uh, the opening for me. The o the opening is mm -hmm. really striking. It's you know they invade a star destroyer. There's lots going on. It's it's our three old heroes working together as a team, yeah. being heroic, and it's it's really good. I think it, really it is. is what a lot of people wanted to see in the sequel trilogy, right? The big three kicking butt and taking names. And yeah. Luke, Luke looking edgy like we got in the Mandalorian finale. Um, all right, here's one of my favorite moments. I love the Bantha jousting the Tusken Raiders. <laughs> that was excellent. George, the oh, one God. note legendarily that George Lucas gave on this book was this. Um, he didn't want the sand people to reveal their faces. You got to keep the sand people under wraps. <laughs> that's the one thing George Lucas <laughs> had to say. And uh, legendarily, right? that's as the legend goes. Here, here's a quote, though, from page 241, one of my favorite quotes in the book. All right, Commander Gek, look... Commander Gek looked around to Luke, smiling gloatingly. Looks like we have you in our clutches at last, you murdering religious freak. 
<laughs> I love that line. I read it to my wife this morning at breakfast. I was like, good morning, honey. Listen to this. <laughs> I kid you not. Great. I loved it. I, I'm so close to finishing. Can't wait to get to it tonight. It'll either be before or after the Ewok adventure, but it's going to happen for sure. Um, so if you want this book, of course, we don't have a, a Utini affiliate link. You have to get it on the internet. The author, of course, made this available for free. Let's spend a couple minutes here talking about the real world, real world ramifications of this, though. Kenneth C. Flint has a couple of pages in the back of the book where he talks about how this came to be and what went wrong. And he basically says that his writing career ended after this. I mean, he's back at it now. He says he's still got some good years of writing left in him, but this really, really derailed his career. Freddie, do you want to talk about the real world implications of, of how this went wrong? Yeah. So, I mean, let, let's think about how exactly this all went down, right? He, he had the book, did no, he did not have a contract. So when, when Lucas arts, Lucas, yeah, Lucas film, Lucas arts, I always forget Lucas arts the, is the games. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Lucas film, when they, the publishing, you know, when they, when they came down to the publishing, they, they went with Chusa Bakura and they just saw this other book and said, okay, let's, you know, let's shelve it. It's done. Uh, we don't have to pay this guy. We don't have to do anything. It's, there's no contract. So you know, the, the real life implications is, is when a person writes for Star Wars, think about Timothy Zahn, for instance, how many fans follow his writing, you know, how, how many yeah. fans see him in this high level franchise, you know, Kevin J. Anderson, even as well, and will go follow that, that author into a different franchise or a different, you know, maybe their own books yeah. uh, in that case. And that's exactly what happened here, right? He, he had his big break. And then before he knew it, they just Phantom didn't respond to any of his messages. And this is this is in the 90s, guys. This is like snail mail and phone calls and yeah. fax machines. Thankfully, he saved the floppy maybe. disks, though, so we could get this book all these years <laughs> later. I, I really consider it a very brave move on his part to put this out for us as Legends fans, just purely for our enjoyment and for Star Wars history. Um, you're a bit of a Star Wars archivist, Trevor. Are you glad this exists in the world? Yeah, I am. Absolutely. Um, I didn't even know until this, this leaked about a year ago i think and yeah. i had no idea this existed and i you know i pride myself on knowing a lot so when something <laughs> like this comes and takes me by surprise i'm all for it yeah yeah it was a good read too at least for me let me know uh did you like it more or less than trusa bakura and hey thank you to kenneth c plant for putting this out in the world the good news in all of this is he at least got to keep the $10,000 advance that they spotted him to write this book. So it would have been bad if they'd also not only not published this book, but sent him a bill for $10,000. <laughs> By the way, George wants his money back. Well, this has been a ton of fun. That does it for this week. Thanks for joining us on Legends Look Back. Uh, thank you to our incredible patrons who have helped make this show happen. If you would like your thoughts right on the show, if you want to let me know that uh, I'm right and that this should have been in place of Truce of Bakura, email us at legendslookback at utini.com. You can interact with us in the Legends Look Back Discord channel, leave a comment on this episode on YouTube, or find us on Twitter. You can find us at Legends Look Back, or you can find Freddy at... At, at Wake Up Freddy. <laughs> Meg? at Meg Dowell. Trevor. I'm at Davy Todd. Or me. I'm at Jared Q. Mays. If you're looking to buy some of these books and want to help support the show, obviously not these books. <laughs> 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 Look up a book on Utini. Click the Amazon link in the profile. And leave, or, of course, you can leave us a review and let us know what you think. Remember, everybody, especially with a topic as sensitive as this, people's livelihoods are on the line. All right, let's keep the Utini fan code and be a force for positivity in the fandom. May the force be with you.